Hey everybody, it's Alex from Heavy New York. We are in the dressing room behind the Knitting Factory, and today we are here with Elijah of Cane Hill, round two. How's it going? It's so good to have you here. I know there was a couple of van troubles today and everything like that. 80 van troubles. Yep. What? 80 van troubles. 80? Yeah, 80 van troubles, dude. Our whole thing's fucked. So. That sucks. Um, but it was so great to talk to you. The last time we spoke, uh, Too Far Gone was just fresh out. But now you put out um, Kill the Sun, which uh, your publicist was calling Alice and Kane. Yes, of- yes, yes. We want to do tours as Alice and Kane as well. Oh, really? Just doing Alice in Chains covers, but yeah. Yeah. Um, what I was curious is, is because, you know, I thought you've expressed many different usages of your voice behind it, and it sounded beautiful. Was it a different mind frame making that as opposed to your other records? Absolutely. I mean, we went into something completely new, did a completely different sound. We um, were doing completely different content, you know. In general, I think it, it was the biggest challenge that we've ever done musically because it's just so out of our norm. Okay. Was it like a different, like, were you in like a different headspace or was there a different emotion or was there any similarities behind making this for as well as Too Far Gone? Uh, It was similar in the sense that there was a lot that revolved around death and past experiences, Um, but I think my mindset was much more depressive than than Too Far Gone, much more lost than Too Far Gone. So um, while there were some similarities, I would say in general the entire experience was polar opposite from what we've done. I get you. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, what I was curious about is being a vocalist, and I don't think I asked you this last time, but do you need to hear music to come up with lyrics, or has there ever been a time where maybe like a lyrical concept or subject matter determined the outcome of the music? It really goes back and forth. I mean, sometimes I'll hear a song and I know exactly what it's supposed to be about, or I'll just dig through lyrics that I have in my phone because I'm always keeping a notepad going of different ideas um, until I find something that does fit. So it really just is a case-by-case basis with with the technique that I use to to find the lyrics. Um, You say you make music about death and past experiences. Do you like to pass this message on to your listeners, or are you? Do you like to leave your lyrics open to interpretation? I definitely like to leave them open to interpretation, um, because if I tell you what a song is about to me, that'll take away what it might have meant to you beforehand, which is not the intention of the art at all. It's very subjective, very meant to be um, a personal experience for everybody. So. I mean, a lot of people ask me what songs are about, and I try to ignore answering what they're about because to me, it'll always be one very specific moment. But to anyone else who hears one line and attaches that to some part of their life, that's much more important than whatever I was feeling when I wrote it. Could maybe, if somebody tells you their perception on a song or their interpretation, could that maybe change your perspective on the song at all? Like, or maybe feel about it differently? No. No, I've got my intentions with the song, I've got my meaning behind the song. Um, if they find other meaning, that's mostly on them um my my heart stays very similar to where it starts in the song so has has your heart changed at all though with the making of new music um it's definitely helped me grow as a person it's always been a cathartic experience i get a lot of my psychological woes out through the music so i think I have changed drastically with the music i don't know if the music has changed me but as we've made music i have changed and uh, just uh, one or two more questions is um, with the Kill the Sun EP because I really there are people who are discovering Kane Hill now because of you guys uh, because of that one EP and then when they listen to like Too Far Gone they're like I didn't expect that like the people I think somebody called you like a new age Mike Patton because of like how you yeah but um, do you think that this could further broaden your audience as well yeah. that was the plan um, to open our music up to an audience that doesn't necessarily listen to screaming music you know or angry music and, and give them that kind of entrance into what bands that make this music are capable of doing and put it in their ears because I think a lot of people who don't like heavy music have never heard it or have never given it a chance for whatever reason. So this feels like it's giving a gateway to people to kind of move into this scene and become fans. And uh, one final question, and thanks again so much for your time. Um, um, it's just um, seeing uh, somebody who's, I see, this is probably going to be my fifth time seeing you guys live tonight. And uh, seeing you guys live is a completely different experience than listening to your headphones. For you, how different of an experience is it performing live versus? Absolutely different. There's different energy. That's why we put out a live album because we know that the energy is very different live than record. So it's uh, every night's a new fun experience when we're playing it live. It, it, we don't, nothing feels the same as it used to, if that makes sense. Well, 
Elijah, thank you so much for your time. Yep, is there just anything else you'd like to promote with the band uh, after this tour with Silar that you're allowed to talk about? This will be uploaded by midnight. Mostly just buying my merch because my van broke. <laughs> and we need money. That's it. Awesome. <laughs> well, Elijah, thanks again. Everybody, Elijah of Cane Hill, the Kill the Sun EP, pick that up, and we'll see you next time on Heavy New York.